just in, the nomadic crowbot's obsession with narrowboat hatches continues to spiral radically out of control. They have one in the living room, one in the bedroom, another one in the bedroom, a ceiling one in the living room, and a ceiling one in the kitchen. But five hatches wasn't enough for dirty old crowbot. They are now creating hatch number six, floor hatch. Welcome to our narrowboat cellar hatch makey thingy. So our reclaimed refit of the narrowboat's kitchen is coming to an end. Now narrowboats are meant to have hatches in the floor so that you can check the bilges to check if anything's going wrong down there, mainly if there's a leak or something. So this is our narrowboat's kitchen and this is its kitchen inspection hatch. You normally have one of these right at the back of the boat as well because that's where any water would trickle down to. Unfortunately our narrowboat had every single inspection hatch covered by this tongue and groove and it was proper nailed in and a real chore to get off. But we're repurposing it and we're going to make it look all nice and lovely. So when we purchased the boat a year and a half ago, two days in, we discovered this mahoosive leak under the floorboards, which basically meant that we just had to completely refit the entire boat. Yeah, it's been a quite, quite the journey, guys. So in the last episode, we, we finished off nailing in about half of the tongue and groove flooring, which has taken ages. But in this episode, we are determined to try and complete the entire kitchen floor. Finally, we are still going to have to put a coating over it but for this episode we want to get it nailed down. Now we are on to the floor hatch. We always wanted to make sure that we could go in here and we want to use this also as a little storage area. So these panels aren't nailed down yet. Becca has just prepared them. Guys, guys, come with me. Look what I've found. <laughs> it's Chris's secret marigold stash. There is one. There is two. There is three. There is four packs of marigolds. I think we have a problem. Put them back in the drawer. I found your secret stash. Make sure you use the old ones first. They've still got a bit of use left in them. They've still got a bit of grip on them. We're going to have to go to Marigolds Anonymous. <laughs> I've reached the little trapdoor hatch. So I'm going to focus my attention on that, but I can already spot that I'm going to have to make a few adjustments. So the way I designed the hatch was so that the edge of this sits over the top of where it's cut out underneath. So this bit will give it stability, but obviously it'll be attached to this so you can actually lift it out. However, now that all the flooring is fitting kind of nice and tightly, I've noticed that on this side, the edge of the frame pretty much lines up with the cut line. Thus, there's nothing really for it to attach to. So I've come up with a cunning plan because I don't want to throw out my nice lines that I have here. Everything sort of isn't all nice and lined up. So what I'm going to do is actually broaden the hatch by a little bit and cut away to about here, which will give this something to anchor onto because I was actually going to replace the hatch door itself because the ply underneath is pretty shoddy and it's broken in places and a bit wobbly and creaky. So I think that should work fine. So let's get to it. So I have my marked my line, I'm just going to use the multi tool to cut it out. I think there's a screw in it which is why it's not coming out. I'm just going to have to give it a bit of a yank. I can't get to the screw head. Yeah, as I suspected, there was a cheeky little hidden screw. Now, some of these are just so old, they're nigh and impossible to remove. Here's the culprit. So, yeah, as you can see, that I've no chance getting that out with a screwdriver. I've broadened it, so now I'm going to go and make the new sort of inlay on the ply inlay so that I can start fixing my nice wood on top and complete the hatch. So I've taken my old hatch with the extra bit on the side that I've just cut out so that I can use it as a template for cutting out a new hatch from this bit of ply. There you go, make that out. So I'm just going to chop that out with the jigsaw and hopefully it will fit. And so here's the final cut out. So let's go see if it actually fits the hole. So it fits just nicely. There's just a couple of like bits I need to cut away that are just so stopping it from sitting flush. There's just a little bit in that corner there you can see and 
there as well. If it's not the side hatches, it's the blooming floor hatches. If it's not them, next it will be the, these top ones up here. <laughs> Hatched, tastic. I mean, you always wanted a hatch on a narrowboat, didn't you? Yeah, that one. So. <laughs> <laughs> so as beautiful as hatches can be, obviously there's a big security problem with them, so we're going to have to really step up our game. I think we'll be all right for the floor one. What do you reckon? So I've cut those little bits out, and the board is sitting nicely in terms of size. However, there is a bit of this going on, which I believe the culprit of which is this. I think this must just be sitting ever so slightly higher at one point, so it's just making the board rock. Safety first, always. Oh, missed. Missed again. Let's just put it on normally. <sighs> Nothing covered up at all. Nothing covered up in the kitchen. Let's go, let's get sanding inside. This is exactly the way you do it on an arrowboat. You don't care about dust. Do you reckon this is a good idea? Doesn't it? Well, it could also be this, it'd be that whole thing, couldn't it? But it's when you press in the middle that it does it, isn't it? So we're starting to take out the sort of structured parts of the narrowboat now. The proper structured beams that you shouldn't touch. So that's that's how crowbot roll. <laughs> I've gone in here pretty hard actually now. And uh, I've given it a try a few times and it's not budging at all. So we're hacking away at it. <laughs> Last chance to dance, because if we keep going, there'll be nothing left. <laughs> exactly the same. I wonder if it, you'd be better off putting a little something just in that corner, just what, like you, a you spacer mean, like, or something. A beer mat under a wonky it's exactly table. what I mean. So in true crowbot fashion, we're just going to leave this for now and crack on with getting this floor nailed down. I'm ready to start laying the top bit of flooring on the top of it so i have been angling away like making sure everything's sort of right so we're ready to just start gluing and nailing the, the bits on so that i can then carry on with the rest of the floor and for that you need a, a special gluing expert don't you for that i need my glamorous gluing assistant yeah. anyone guess who he is so yeah my uh, job role in this episode is just gluing really good god Suppose it can't go too wrong, eh? Yeah, oh, could release a book back. The Hatch Diaries. Someone in the comments, I think it was now wrote Will actually said you guys could like teach lectures on on doing hatches. Now. That's not going to stick on the side bit where I put glue in, oh, is it? Oh, Yes, it is. So we're just correcting a little oversight here, which is that we need that bit to be free of glue, because otherwise we'll glue the hatch shut. <laughs> Which is not what we were and this brings us to a very exciting, impressive part of the narrowboat's hatch, and probably my favourite feature on the narrowboat so far. Check out this shiny new little bad boy. Bex is going to fit this to the centre of the hatch so that we can pull it up nice and easily. And it may just look like a cute little shiny thing, but I am telling you, you are in for a treat. We are about to go very, very posh, and you'll see why. So we fired up the multi-tool and gave that a spin, but it seemed a little bit too heavy for the bit of wood. This seems far too aggressive, so I've decided we're going for this one. So this is the Dremel, and hopefully we'll get a smoother cut with this. On to a little bit of a, a sad and more serious topic. If you get the chance, guys, please try and subscribe to the channel, because I think, I think half the people that watch the videos haven't subscribed yet. And... We're falling behind. All these other channels are just speeding off in the distance and it makes us very sad. <laughs> and now we chisel. Chris doing a bit of chiseling. Help Bex out. Didn't want her getting too tired, worn out. It's awful, isn't it? Where are you? Oh, these are not very sharp, these chisels. Is this the real way, the right way of doing it? There we go, our crevice. Is this a bit bodgy? 
doesn't look particularly beautiful, but that doesn't matter because... I'm doing this and forgetting which way it's meant to go in. That's it. Ta-da! Nice and smooth, so don't trip on it. Chris trips up enough without, without needing extra obstacles. <laughs> Just going to sand around the edges, so clean it up a bit, screw it in, and then we can get the last of the hatch panels glued in and setting. So we're going to come back to the hatch and the rest of the floor in just a little bit. And I'm telling you, we are going to finish it in this episode. No more messing around. Good morning, guys. So today we're going to go over, for, for the whole day, a very small segment of today, we're going to go over to the, the secret wooden pile in the, um, the car park where everyone bungs their old wood and see if we can find any bits to bung on our fireplace aren't we? Yeah we're gonna see if we can score any free firewood because there's all sorts of stuff in there bits that have come off boats. Some of the other marina guys sort of get scraps and bits and bobs from their jobs so they pile it onto this massive pile and there's some really good sort of wood on there that we could chuck on our fire so. We've got the guys in the uh the wide bean next to us, I keep seeing him out there uh, chopping up lovely big lumps of wood and it's all free and they've got their fire going constantly. Again, all free. I'm going to try and use his saw and cut us some up. I'm going to give Chris a little um, tutorial on how to use a wood saw and get a really muscly arm. Oh, I bloody hate sawing because it just doesn't seem to go anywhere, does it? You're going like this for ages and it's like you've done like a millimetre or something. Uh, that's, you don't know the secrets to sawing. It doesn't normally do that. We could have a little go through some of this as well. If you hadn't noticed, we love wood. We just hold on to it like no one's business, don't we? I'm like really weirdly protective over wood because I'm always yeah. like, you know, a tree has given its life for that. So I don't just want to toss it aside. It's not probably popular opinion, but it's not. We're starting to sound like those people that just don't want to throw anything away, aren't we? Lumps of wood everywhere, and Bex doesn't ever want to get rid of any of these lumps of wood, and I'm always going, let's take them down to the wooden pile. Ever so often I'll sneak one down there. I actually use so much of that wood when I need something, when I'm building something, I'm always going into that pile, and it's useful. Yeah. I'm not just doing it for no reason. Once the boat's done, obviously it'll be different, but at the moment... There we go, what can I say? The girl likes wood. <laughs> so this looks see this is this you can't burn this sort of stuff can you? Like this? Solid wood, so I mean that's thin but stuff like that. Only yeah. solids. Christmas has come early for Bex. What about that one? Is that a good one? So now we'll build like a, a chair out of that. Colonel Crow. That's quite a good one actually, isn't it? We reckon Colonel Crow. I like it. It's meant to be a good one, this. Venom. Whoa. And uh, Beck's going to train me now how to do it. Because my experience with soaring, like a millimetre comes off about every hour, doesn't it, or something? It's very de-rewarding. Is that even a word, de-rewarding? Unrewarding. <laughs> de rewarding. First thing, always try and avoid knots because they're really hard. Mm. So you want to get go back a couple of times and bed your saw in and then you'll find that you'll be able to just God that's well quick. That's the venom for you, isn't it? it does help having a good saw. Okay, here we go. You made it look so easy, which makes me think I've got to be stronger than you. This will come off in seconds. To get one of these. Okay, here we go, back to the floor guys. The protective sleeve on top of the uh, lovely wooden floor. It's like it's protective blanket. It's like one of those things that kids have, like, you know, do that. Yeah, yeah. Unsheath her. It's a very technical process. Oh! Don't worry about it. 
There it is! One person did say on the comments about um, being a bit worried when the wood swells in the summer and stuff because they're so close together, if that would become a problem or not. I don't think they're that close to you. I think there's probably enough room. Wiggle room, yeah. Yeah, fortunately. I really hope so anyway. <laughs> but what I'll do is when we do take this right back to the wall, I'll leave a gap and there will be a gap on this side anyway. Yeah. So that will hopefully absorb any movement. If not, we'll just get it all up again and make another video in a year's time. That'll be after, that'll be a few months actually, because it's summer in a few months. So. It's these, you have these sort of awful moments where you're like, oh, did I think about that? Because someone said something else about, um, it's all well and good nailing and gluing them down, but if you need access to your water pipes, you should make sure you know where they are first, because otherwise you'd have to rip the whole floor up to get to them. I'm like, Whew, it's all good because we know where they are. Do we? Well, I know where they are. <laughs> yeah. So, and how to access them, so it's all good. It's all along the side, which actually we can get to under the cupboards anyway. So. As long as we've got you here, we're fine, aren't we? But if you ever leave at any point, it's going to be complete carnage, isn't it? Come on out on them with Grinch slippers. Behold, my beautiful hey. hatch. These are stuck on here, aren't they? Yeah, but these outer bits aren't. So that's they... why it looks a bit wonky at the minute. So I'm going to carry on from where I left off and get all the finishing edges put on. We'll get the handle put on. Bex always wanted a hatch, and the first boat we viewed never had a hatch, and then suddenly we viewed this one. It's got three side hatches, two roof hatches, and uh, <laughs> two hatches that lead to the cellar of the boat too. The it's, bilges. It's literally <laughs> just all hatch. That's, it is, that's yeah. all there is to it. Okay, it's time guys. We're gonna get that lovely golden shiny knobbly thing screwed onto the hatch. You ready? Shiny, shiny. Love that. Isn't she good? Dare I say, Crowbot has just gone posh, eh? You add a bit of brass to something and it looks dead sexy, doesn't it? it looks yeah. All, like, fancy and stuff. Look at that. Along with the... I mean... Oh. There you go. To glue this. You ready? Impressed? Very, but I laid the fire, I'm just saying. Look at that go! That is blazing like none other. I've done it again, haven't I? I've done it again. Constantly learning, first time ever lighting a fire without coal, just wood. Hi guys, it's stressed Bex here. Got the hatch complete and now I've just got this sort of little section to, to finish off. But I've already identified a couple of problems before I even began. I've wanted to have the planks sort of running in line with each other. Because for one, I think visually that looks better, but also it actually helps with alignment. And anyhow, you get to here and if you see, this is where that plank should be lined up to, but it's... Is that smaller? Smaller. Yeah, this one's smaller because I cut out and fit all of these separately at another time and it's that same old thing again that now I've reached this point, things are sitting slightly differently and now they're a bit too thin. So I'm going to remake those that line there just to bring budge everything across so then it'll continue these these lines that will then bring this up to the edge of the hatch which will correct the problem there because currently there's a massive gap you can't properly see it but there'd be that much of a gap and then we'll try and work out what's going on here because something's not right here but again i think i cut these ones 
thinner when laying everything down so i'm hoping i can just sort of redo them realign them and it'll work she's got it hasn't she i'm sure she's got it it's so hard and stressful <laughs> What's the reading like? Good. <laughs> I've corrected the two problems that I encountered and I think all is good again in the land of floor. You can see now my planks just nicely line up again and then where there was the big gap here that you saw in the video that's all nice and squared off and all good again. Now it's just laying these down properly. And these aren't affixed yet, so they're a bit higgledy piggledy but... Look at that one, that needs sanding. Yeah. So not only am I a fantastic gluer, I'm also a fantastic sander. Yeah. Actually, I'm just alright. <laughs> Here we go, boss. We're really rolling with this old wood now. Have a look in here. We've only ever used coal so far, and uh, wood seems to be the way to go. But <laughs> if you're cold anyway, you do have to see to it sort of every half hour or so and keep loading it up because it does go down quicker. But it seems that the wood is best for a quick fix and the coal, obviously, you can make the coal go for about six hours, I think, if you just pile it up and it will just bubble away nicely. So we're going to finish off the last little wee. It's just Bex, isn't it? Our gluing don't count. Bex is just finishing off the last little bits of the kitchen and then we're going to have the grand unveiling. That also covers up the rotten floor beneath it. So before the great unveil, uh, do you remember that tapping noise I could hear in the night? So, I've just been down here messing around with the flooring and I can hear this tapping that Chris was talking about this morning. So I've like followed my ear. I was sort of down here. There's a pipe here. So I was listening into the wall, looking like a full on crazy person. And I was like, it's coming from here. And I was like, right, let's have a look out here. Look what's out there, level with that line. There's the blimmin' culprit. That's been keeping me up for a few days. <laughs> I thought it was like one of these things that, you know, it's just gonna, for the rest of my life now, I'm just gonna hear this tapping noise, sort of. What, it's such a simple thing, really. Why didn't I even think of that? I think because there's quite a strong current in the river at the minute, so it's just gradually going like this, tapping against the boat, so. Problem solved, nothing too sinister, thankfully. You can tell we're not very good at this, can't you? <laughs> Last little bit to do. The floor is completed after, what, four or five days of doing? Not too bad going, is it? It's not really, I mean, it's just very, very, very time consuming. I think if it was new flooring, you probably wouldn't have that problem. But who knows? The last one. So here we go, the great reveal. This is all completely nailed down now. I'm just praying the ballast situation in the bilges is all right, because we, we'll have to rip it all up again to get down there. Look at this, look at the hatch. Coming back to that in a minute. Hasn't Bex done amazing? And we, like I said earlier, we do still need to put a coating or something on this. Socks, I'm allowed on. Hatchy, hatchy. That's amazing, isn't it? Done so well, Bex. Yeah, I'm pretty chuffed with how it's come up, but I keep saying to Chris, I'll keep spotting bits as a bit there, which I could have done better, and I'm a bit too much of a perfectionist, I think, but I'm just gonna have to swallow it and accept that there is a couple of places that are slightly gappier than others. <laughs> Should we get the, the hatch open and show them how it looks inside there? Okay. So that's grubby down there at the moment, but we're gonna make that into a nice little uh, cellar, aren't we? <laughs> we've got conservatory, uh, now we've got a cellar. That is amazing. And you've got your little thingy there as well, haven't you? So impressive. When did Crowbot get so posh? Add a bit of brass and things go posh, don't they? I can see us getting really cocky now. 
Throw the things like this. It just goes to show though, never doubt your ability because, you know, just have a go at things. What's the worst that can happen at the end of the day? We don't know what we're doing, but this has come up all right. So if it instills some confidence in anyone else wanting to try and tackle something DIY-ish, just give it a whirl. Why not? We done it so you can too. High five.